SAR models refer to a system of differential equations that are used to describe the transmission of a disease. Because of this, SAR models are frequently used in epidemiology in order to identify causes and risk factors of diseases. This information is then used in an attempt to control and prevent future outbreaks of the disease. The SAR model divides the population into three compartments, susceptible, infected, and recovered, and describes the movement of the population through these compartments. To illustrate how an SAR model works, we will begin with the most basic model. With the SAR model, we will have a differential equation for each compartment. In this basic model, the only way for a person to move from compartment to compartment is for a susceptible person to become infected or an infected person to become recovered. Therefore, we set up the differential equations as follows. The movement out of the susceptible group will be by new infections, which will then increase the number of infections, and the infected group will be decreased by the current infected's recovering, which will then increase the proportion of recovered. Along with this basic model, or any SIR model, come several assumptions. First, we will be assuming that once an infected person is recovered, they will no longer be susceptible to the illness. An example of this is chickenpox, where once you have gone through the stages of becoming infected and recovered, you are unlikely to ever be infected by the disease again. Next, we are assuming that the time period of the epidemic is short enough that the birth and death rates are negligible. Next, we are assuming that there are no vaccines available so a person cannot move directly from the susceptible to the recovered compartment. Finally, we are assuming that all individuals are equally likely to become infected. The next model we will look at is very similar to the first, except that we will now be assuming that if once a person becomes recovered, they do not stay recovered. They can re-enter the susceptible group and become infected once again. This change adds an additional term to the susceptible group, which is then decreases the recovered group. With this change, we can eliminate one of our earlier assumptions, allowing us to more accurately model many diseases, such as the flu. The next change we will make is adding birth and death rates into this model. This is necessary for diseases that persist over a long period of time where we cannot assume that the total population remains constant throughout the lifespan of the disease. With this change, we have an additional way for each population to decrease, as well as a way that the susceptible population will in be increased over time. As I previously stated, the addition of natural birth and death rates in the model allows us to expand its use to diseases that infect the population for longer periods of time, further eliminating one of our earlier assumptions. These are just a few of the modifications that can be made to the basic SIR model to better fit a particular disease. In order to model the transmission of the parasite through the, the two hosts and the waterfowl for our project, a system of eight differential equations was used. These are the eight equations used for our model. The first three equations describe the movement of the lesser skull between susceptible to low and high density infections. The remaining five equations describe the maturing of the snails until they become, su become susceptible, and then the rate at which the, the susceptible snails are becoming infected by the different stages of the parasite. We are interested in using these equations to find equilibrium solutions in order to learn under what circumstances the parasite can no longer survive.